Okay, the first one I would say is probably a steel texture. So steel. And I'll go to images and I'll do an extra large image search here. And this one looks good. I'm not going to be too picky about what textures I use. Usually they turn out rather well no matter what kind of textures you use based upon the shadows being baked in. I'll paste this in real quick and go in here. Kind of move it down. Stretch it out. Apply it by going to the move. And as I said, you can quickly go in here to this one and go to the magic wand tool if needed. Highlight this area. You can go uh, and hit delete on the keyboard on this layer right here. Voila. Okay, to clean it up, I can quickly go into the marquee tool and chop these off by going to delete. Just like that. Okay, now if I turn this on multiply, what it'll do, it'll shade it corresponding to my back layer. And if I zoom in on it, you can see how that works. Now I got the texture and the shadow. The texture is really dark, however, because what um, Blender did was use a gray value for the ambient occlusion. So if you do not like that and you want to change it, you can just quickly go to this layer and do an adjustment, contrast brightness. And you can change the brightness level. I would use legacy if you're using CS4. And if that's not changing too much, it's because I deselect that. There we go. Image adjustments, trying to touch brightness. Let's see how that occurs now. See, much better. Changing the contrast ratio is always good. The higher the contrast ratio on the actual texture, the better it'll look. Uh, you definitely want high texture, high contrast when it comes to this stuff. So stuff that you can do to make that happen is the contrast of brightness. And you can also adjust the levels quite a bit to find out what works. See how much that brings that texture in focus? Very high contrast. You can also sharpen it quite a bit. Filter, render, or filter, sharpen, sharpen. So that sharpened those edges quite a bit. Now when you look at it, it looks a lot deeper. Okay, now let's get the other texture, shall we? Let's go in here. The same same applies to every texture though. You know, it's not like I'm changing anything up. So if I go to leather, and let's go in here. Maybe choose this leather. Eh, that's kind of an ugly skin leather. This is kind of sweet. Copy this image. I can right click copy and edit paste. Okay. Now to see what I'm doing, I'm going to just turn this to multiply. Sometimes you don't even have to chop it off. You know, if you turn it to multiply and just kind of adjust this in, it works just as well. Save yourself a step. Okay, next, next texture is an iron. Yeah, this looks good. Copy image. 
go back here and edit paste that in. It won't let me paste because I have an apply. It's a very common thing within Photoshop. If you can't do something in Photoshop, it won't let you do it. Like if there's something missing up in the menu or it won't let you highlight things. It's best just to kind of look if you have to apply something. That's generally what's wrong with it. Okay, so let's turn this back on the multiply so I can see. And go in here and shape this item to kind of match this pummel area. Okay, it looks like we're going to have to chop just a little bit off here. So apply it. And I like using this polygonal lasso for that. So I'm just going to quickly go in here and cut this little area off. Delete on the keyboard. Okay, so there we go. Now, another thing you can do, okay, several things that you can do, but there's another thing. If I take this and I want to strengthen those cracks and crevices, what I can do is right click, duplicate layer, move it to the top of the stack, and then go back and multiply it again. Okay? So you can see everything got a little bit darker. Okay, let's save this out. Let's save as, and I will save it as a TIFF. This is a very long name. I'll be able to find that in Blender rather, rather well. And I'm going to make sure there's no compression on it. Okay, back to Blender. Where I can go in here, image, open, and choose that as my TIFF. Okay, if you want to see it within Blender, all you have to do is go to the textured And there's your knife, all textured out. If you find something's too strong, like let's say this shadow is just a little bit too strong on the item, you can always take that and go back into Photoshop real quick. Maybe turn this layer off. Maybe that was just a little bit too much. Save it. Go back to Blender. back into this window, image, reload. There we go. And you can definitely see the advantage here with the serration part of this. Everything that's really bright in the preview window is because, you know, by, by default, all 3D programs are just fully lit. So you're not going to see the actual advantage of anything until you render it out. Uh, don't forget, it before you render, however, to turn on your ambient occlusion approximate so you can get a full um, final gather. Aha! See, it doesn't show up. And I'll show you why that is in the next video.